Really, Dad Twist? Jesus Christ, this has become World of War, or World of Tanks. What is this shit? Dad! Fuck! Fuck you, Wiggler! Somehow you made waste tracks full of bursting circle button. I'm out of here. Well, that was a very interesting story. Ah, I'm back. So, well, at least I get to re rearrange my back. <laughs> Batman Arkham Knight review is finally out after three weeks of its release, and I will do. I will indeed explain to you, my fans, of, of why I'm gone for that many weeks since I, re I uploaded my Mortal Kombat X review. Well, basically, it's just family, old family business, and I can't tell you, but it definitely hit me heavily, and I had to wait for three weeks until I get back and get my parents back, and they are back. So let's get straight to review. Batman Arkham Knight is a fucking almost masterpiece worth of the game. If it weren't for these problems, it would have been ma amazing. But it is an amazing story. That's what I can give. The story is amazing. I can't do my segments. I had to do spoiler free and send spoilers. And the spoilers it is basically going to talk about more about uh, what happens during the story. Now let's get to the spo non spoilers. First off, the Batmobile. Everyone complained about the Batmobile turned to tank. I can see what they're talking about, but I never really have a problem with the, the Bat Tank. Or the Batmobile, as it's called. But, but it is indeed fun. It's fun to drive around and stunning uh, criminals. And I do indeed have to eject a joke because if, it, if it, all those criminals are dead, why did they didn't put on, turn on his machine gun in that car? Because if you look at the, when he's fighting the drones, it originally is an actual machine gun. And when he takes those criminals down, like by just pressing the button, I believe it's just a, uh, just a translator gun. You know how it does. Fire that gun. Fire that gun and they will go down and stay asleep as long as they can. <laughs> but now to the uh, event, uh, then comes the problem during the course of the game that you have to use the Batmobile for the Riddler challenges. And they're fucking annoying. I actually originally gave up on one of them. I went, this is too ridiculous. And they, you know, I wonder why Rocksteady thought it was a good idea just to make a Batmobile track. And it's not needed. It was needed for the Scarecrow Nightmare missions. But not the Riddler. Who, who ever think the Riddler knows about the Batmobile? How do you know that? No one. No one knew about the Bat Tank. Well, the Batmobile. But, but, it, but it is indeed a great mechanic when, when out in the field. You can drive faster and eventually you can super glide up to the air and uh, fly a little bit longer. And there's even a trophy for it. I'm going to use the Batmobile for it. That you fly up in the air and then you go down and between all the three bridges of the three, all the main three islands. And you have to have it in one continuous light, which will be a challenge. But if you ever do that challenge, I'll pull you. But be careful when doing it. But the combat, in, the combat in this game is fantastic. Because you, you basically got your same mechanics from Arkham City, but it's stepped up a notch. And I haven't played Arkham City Origins 
and Asylum, sadly. But I, I'm glad I didn't play Origins. Because I rather played uh, this one rather than Origins. Because it would have been a waste of my time. So, Combat is a, is great, is a great once again, coin to everyone. But it is great combat. And you have to remember what button combinations is if you take a breaks. Because I definitely suffered that because I forgot which button is the which combination of buttons is the, is the finisher uh, finisher move, and and during the course of the game you'll meet you uh, Batman sidekicks like uh, former sidekick uh, Dick Grayson, A.K.A. Night uh, Nightwing. It will join you on your quest, but except Batman is a huge issue in this game because he would have asked for help. He would have asked Nightwing. He would have asked Robin to come out. Including a Catwoman, they would have helped him out, but nope, he's he's solely independent because he's Batman. But that's an invalid argument because clearly Batman needed help in the game. He would have he would have asked my boy Superman to come help and clean out that mess. But what he does, he just tries to find him and failing. But, but the story in this game is fantastic, and it's really very interesting the way they did, and, and, uh, and it's uh, the Batman trilogy all together. It has the last twenty minutes of coin, last twenty minutes of uh, Batman Begins has the invitation factor of Dark Knight, and the Dark Knight rises with his uh, ending. And I think I gave it away of the, what the ending is. I, if I do, I do apologize. I do, but it is necessary for bringing the segment of the Dark Knight Rises. And that's what I should say. But I don't think it's the actual ending. Because I guarantee it's not. Unless you watch the spoiler segment. But the game the game fully wants the Batmobile to be shoved in your face. Because you had to you had to use the Batmobile to defeat Arkham Knight and apparently Stepstruck too. And I haven't done the 100 completion ending because I don't bother with it. Because I seen the ending, so I went better review it. Yeah, and uh, but the side missions are great. Uh, are great once again. You can defeat Penguin. You can be, defeat um, uh, Two Face and uh, any villain that is available. Except Two Face and Penguin don't put out a fight against you. Even Two Face can easily get the uh, self finisher. I take, I took him out first, and then I took out all his men, because that's how easy it was. He's wide out of the open, and it would have been an awesome fight. But nope, there's no clearly no boss battles unless you count that, uh, that and that like during the course of the, the end, where you ha where you meet up with Robin one of the times, and actually fight with him. But. <laughs> Excuse that, that's my dog barking. But you need, but you really need to have con full concentration on what his uh, story is about. Because you can easily lose track of uh, what the story is. And, and, um, I forgot about it. So, oh, yes, now I need to go straight to the villains. The villains are great. And um, kind of for Arkham Knight, I will explain in a spoiler segment why I don't think he's that great of a villain. Because I hate, you know, I hate villains that become wimps. That don't even fight him. Or reveal to be someone else that you, you kind of expected. And, and when I watched uh, Jeremy Jones' spoiler talk recently on uh, Arkham Knight, I totally agree with him on Arkham Knight. But Scarecrow is a great villain. Very entertaining. He's... He's met my expectations of villains. Because you have to be threatening and entertaining. I like villains that are entertaining. Not a wimp. But he is kind of right at near the end. But he's... he's He became Batman's greatest adversary other than the Joker. Since, you know, after the events of Ar uh, Arkham City, he's dead. And, can, and you can actually burn him alive. Right into the opening, cinema when in the opening cinematics of the game. But the textures on him look beautiful. That's what the next thing I gotta say about this game. This game looks beautiful. The gra graphics, the rain, the, ar and the armor of Batman looks fantastic. You should change the skin of Batman when he gets the armor suit. Change the skin because 
the other skin looks beautiful. And that's what you should expect. Because the other armor, because you, as expected from the Arkham games, your back suit does get wear and tear and gets shot at. No spoilers at all. But this is Batman, which they should have retitled Batman Arkham Knight to Batman Arkham Tanks. Because it's clearly a game full of tanks. But the, te but the textures on everything, including Deathstroke, for that, for that uh, when you get past the game and you meet Deathstroke, he, and graphics, what I see of him, he looks uh, he looks great. And I'm sorry I say Deathstroke because you do have to face him uh, uh, a few times in the game. Uh, you only meet him uh, in the end of the game after you do the actual story mode. So I can safely say that because he's. He's one of the side missions, and I, and in order to do that, you had to have 100% on the, uh, you had to be, uh, destroy every single uh, militia t checkpoint. But I'm intending to try to figure out how to destroy those militia t checkpoints, but I do know how to take out those towers. <sighs> and um, what else is next? There's a lot to talk about about the game. Yeah, and, um... After all, the game is great, and there's plenty of things I have wrong with it. Obviously, one is the Batmobile thing shoving in your face. That's at a con for me. Which I did try to uh, some of the score. Well, I, I, did, I do think, and, and I thought Dark Arkham Knight near the end of the game becomes a huge wimp. I hate villains that become wimps. That's just why I don't love Loki as much as everyone. I thought he was a wimp doing the end of the Avengers. When he's trying to win the battle of New York, I thought he would have taken advantage of that. Of uh, meeting heroes and being, being uh, having a little shove face on them. That's why I like Ultron better. Because he's not a wimp. He takes those heroes out. But I accept the fact that Ultron's a little bit too charismatic. But I will get to the Marvel uh, Cinematic Reviews after Ant-Man. That's when I can start... Uh, uh, give you a ranking of my Marvel movies uh, in the cinematic universe before Civil War comes out, hopefully. But as of right now, we concentrate on the, this review. Since I haven't been reviewing for like three weeks, three whole weeks, so I expect me to get a little bit rusty. And when I talk, <sighs> what else to say about the game that I haven't already said? Side missions are pretty much, uh, there are side missions uh, to do it after, after the game is completed in, in story mode. You can just go back in, do the, uh, do the, uh, the missions they haven't done yet, and then get 100% completion ending. Apparently this game wants you to complete it exactly 100% to order to finish the game and get ending credits. I haven't gotten to that point yet, but I'm still on the... Uh, Still on my way on it, but another con for it is to 100% Riddler. I don't want to 100% Riddler. Riddler is totally over his head. How he know? Like I said about earlier, how did he know about the Batmobile? Seriously, nobody knew about it before he even came down. How did he have that much time to preparate the race tracks? Seriously. Ah. Oh. I think I almost did it. Yeah, and I did not play this on a PC, but I clearly played it on a PS4 version, and the story packs are completely useless because I don't think they fit the story at all. Harley Quinn story, uh, story pack I didn't like. I didn't like it all, and my nightmare relations of Scarecrow felt out of place, and I wanted to see the Red Hood storyline, uh, the story pack, instead of a Harley Quinn one. But even though Harley Quinn is a great character in comics and TV show, but I don't think uh, she's fitted to be as the playable character since she doesn't have Joker to banter from. <sighs> and the matter of family I don't have yet, but I can't make a, com a comment of that. Now I can give you my rating for the non-spoilers. No spoilers at all. This is where you can end the review. 
before I can go full on spoilers and full on discussion about what happens in the story. So, Batman Arkham Knight, the actual non spoiler game, without spoilers, gets a 9.5 out of 10. And I will give it a 5. Uh, uh, no, uh, oh, now I can. And it gets a thumbs up seal approval. You can g uh, grab this game. So this is a badass game, and don't listen to Angry Joe at all. He's just complaining because he played the PC version, as he stated in his review. Because since he had that PC experience, it probably put him off. But I did not play the PC version, so I played on the PS4, and I thought it was an incredible game. I loved it better than he did. But hopefully, the next Superman game, hopefully the next, uh, hopefully ne Rocksteady's next game is Superman, bitches. So we can actually finally get a good Batman game. Batman is already done, now we need Superman to get his game. That is awesome. Now, now uh, for those who don't want uh, spoilers, I spit you for well. And now let's get straight to the spoiler segment of this review. Well, basically, the game starts off as you usually say, uh, what I said in uh, early on in, in this review is uh, when you actually burn the Joker and then you, uh, when, and then you, uh, then shit gets real with uh, the hallucinations, and he get, and the officer gets hallucinated. I thought I was uh, that's a good example of showing his textures. The textures of the game was look good from the opening cinematics. I I appreciated it, but. Now, since the spoiler hat is off, Joker's in this game. Joker is has returned, and including his voice actor, Mark Hamill. I didn't expect it. I, I, I heard Joker's bad, I went, nah, that's not true. And then, when I played the game, I went, holy shit, Joker's back. I went, oh, that's true, this is true, but when I heard that voice from Mark Hamill, I went, holy shit, that is the Joker. That's how... How, that's how I expected I was. I thought it was Troy Baker continuing the, the voice of the Joker. Since Mark Hamill stated that, he, that Arkham City was his last role as the Joker, I do believe him. But I uh, imagine now this is the, his last uh, voice work of the Joker. Since so you imagine he's going to be too busy with Star Wars stuff for the next few years. For the next six years, I should say. Since he's probably going to make appearances in uh, 7, 8, 9. So as the mentor character, and has not to be killed off, unfortunately. But, but the next thing I like to talk about in the story mode is uh, when you actually get to hallucinate by, by the Joker in hallucination games. I thought I was a very, I thought it was fucked up, including the ones in near the end when you get, when you actually drive on a Batmobile, a Joker mobile, I should say, and driving it around and killing everyone, including you actually. Go first person mode. That's a few time and that's the only time in Batman game you actually shoot guns. And during the course of the game you actually you actually get let's say uh, you get hit by a toxic fume from uh, from Scarecrow and and you actually start hallucinating and Joker keeps appearing everywhere you and Claim gives you the jump scare. And Claim Man Bat they both give jump scares when you're grappling off to a rooftop. Didn't scare me all all I went Really? Jump scare? That's why I went. Because I, I never get scared of jump scares. Unless it's built up in horror field. You have to build me up with scared him. And then, BAM! It's scary. And that's what the Poltergeist uh, remake failed to do. It, fa it, it built it up, but it, they ruined it by throwing a freaking scare uh, squirrel on the screen. And that's what I felt like it's... Now it's bad about the Poltergeist remake. But, but the Joker does have his great moments, like including the, uh, the la one of the last moments of the game, after he, Jim Gordon takes off his uh, uh, Batman's mask and reveals him to be Bruce Wayne, and he gets hallucinated uh, by Scarecrow again, but inside, instead is in, in the sanity mode, and including the last line. He actually pulls it off when he I didn't expect him to pull it off. I didn't thought he would pull it off. Since this is the, since the video game did it before Dawn of Justice, even gets to say the line, and I will tell you what it is. I am the night. 
I am vengeance. I am Batman. That was an awesome moment. You get to fight Joker and you get to throw him in the cell. Just to say, no. You, you can't take my brain. Because, because during, uh, during the course of the game you hear a cure for these other Joker things. And Joker, Joker guys actually. And it turns out one of them is you. The Batman. Because uh, during the course of the game you notice that Batman gets affected by the Joker a lot of times. Including making, his, uh, including making multiple cures for it. Including that little bit of Joker toxin. Joker blood is still in at Batman, which I totally understood because I don't imagine in Arkham City he's fully cured. Because if he's fully cured, he would never have this uh, moment in the game. And that's where the Dark Knight ethics come in. Because the Dark Knight ethics is battle for your sanity. Because in the, in the course of the Dark Knight, you're on the edge of your seat and you don't know what the Joker's planning next. He either does this or does that. And I thought, I, I, I never really saw it as in the cinema, I always thought it would have been nine. And I'll probably lose my shit when when Joker's on screen and it would have scared the hell out of me. But at least I watched it before The Dark Knight Rises, of course. But I will get that trilogy retrospective review done. But my on this review of Batman. And you just need. You just need to do it! Okay, Shot Little Booth is probably going to jump on the screen every time I say, Just do it! <sighs> okay, on. Um, never say. D word and back. Yep, of course I'm on the screen. I don't mean that. D. I don't mean. I mean. Just do it. <sighs> this is totally not the right uh, review, Shia. Then uh, probably one of the future reviews I'll do you. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, we need to go back to the, uh, uh, the part where and Batman says, I am vengeance, I am the knight, I am Batman. Do, and when you put, uh, when you're actually in first person mode, you actually see statues of Batman everywhere. I went, the fuck? I'm just like, and I was getting creeped out. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to frighten and, and build that scare factor like you can uh, go <laughs> and then then the next moment is which is I am the night I am vengeance I am Batman moment that's when you get to be you go fuck you and Kevin Conroy voices that line since he pulls it off better hopefully Ben Affleck can pull off well since, he, since I heard he can pull up the Batman, I'm Batman very well, which you need to see. I'm Batman. Yeah. The next part of the uh, spoilers that uh, I'm going to talk about is Arkham Knight. Oh, of course I'm going to talk about Arkham Knight because he's the biggest disappointment I've ever seen in a villain since Malekith. Actually, since the Mandarin. The Mandarin trailers look, look like he's a threatening bad guy, but it turns out to be Trevor. It's more well, spoilers for anyone who has seen Iron Man 3, but it's a hu it, Arkham Knight is a huge villain disappointment since the Mandarin in Iron Man 3. Because seriously, Arkham Knight started out like a good villain, like he knows everything about Batman. I thought it would have been someone else he knew. I, thought, I never thought it would be like Jason Todd or Damian Wayne. Because they completely build it off from the Arkham City, which I agree with Jeremy Johnson, is uh, that they should have done Damian Wayne instead of the actual Arkham Knight review, a reveal, or an actual patient that studied Batman very well and actually gets a military experience, and now I'll reveal who's uh, who's the Arkham Knight, and it is it's Jason Todd.
Yep, of course, says Jason Todd. He, uh, that's what I mean by villain disappointment. I never thought it was him. I thought it was done, done, set, deal with him as Red Hood. I thought he was good as Red Hood. But why is he the guy who's the freaking Arkham Knight? I thought it would have been Damien. I thought it would have been. It would have been Damien Wayne or someone else that knows Batman very well. Not Jason Todd. Seriously. Oh God. This is what I mean by villain disappointment. Because if you build it up to be someone else, other than the intended, uh, uh, intended, in, in, uh, than the actual character that you reveal, that's a bad sign. Marvel faced it for a few times, and DC did face it a few times. And uh, I don't want to drop a girl bird. Yeah, you know, I've owned the Dark Knight Rises on that much because I had to concentrate on this game. But you need. You need to actually keep it an open mind in this game because you're gonna get frustrated. Because you need to know, you have to tell your friend, do not expect someone else or Damien Wayne. Expect this one guy. And he'll go, Jason Todd? And you go, yep. It's lame. It's, I know, it's lame. And yeah, dude, I completely. And it, it completely destroys my. And that colleague hugely downgraded the actual score. It didn't affect it for the non spoilers, but it definitely, with spoilers, it's a huge downgrade. Because you can, if you built it about to, built it up to something else. Do it! Just do it! You just. Damn it! I said it again. I'm about to say it again. Thank you, Shia, for interrupting me. Yeah, you really need to keep an eye, keep an open mind, and now I can go back to the Joker for a little bit because there are moments in the game you will be hallucinating and you'll be being like in the comment panels of the Killing Joke. But what I mean by the Killing Joke is is when Barbara Gordon gets captured and Batman and it's witness how Joker paralyzed her. He richly, he richly is from the comics, but except in the comic version. It's very disturbing. I literally looked it up. Look up DC Explain on the on the Killing Joke. You will get disturbed. You go, oh god, because ritually they shredded Barbara Gordon and took photos of her. And they're ritually perverts. I wonder why Joker wants it. Wanted that. Eventually he does it for James Gordon. I'm like, oh god, this guy is absolute pervert. And he wants to. I wonder why he wants dicks. <laughs> yeah. And, and then it goes to the death of the family, which I thought it was a perfect moment just to show where's Jason, how Jason Todd died in, in Arkham knew of this. Since there's Tim, uh, Dick Grayson, Tim Drake, and uh, Jason Todd. And Jason Todd, I thought, since uh, he was voted to get killed in the comics, it didn't really matter with me. But. It really hurt me. It, it ruined my anticipation of the actual reveal of the Arkham Knight. And, uh, and that's what I talk about when I'm hallucinating. Uh, those are the two f uh, moments from the comics that is actually replicated, but except the explosion part is not in an actual game, which Jason Todd died from, but except he was shot. But did he ever die? Which he's revealed to be Arkham Knight, which I went. God's sake. And you know, eventually uh, you had to face Arkham Knight with this, uh, with your Batmobile against him. Virtually, that's a... Uh, would have been better if you actually fight him one-on-one -on -one combat. Which uh, they should have... Which they done pretty well with Arkham City with Mr. Freeze boss battle. Where you had to do your different strategies every time you, one strategy worked out. Arkham Knight, you just... Uh, you, uh, I mean Red Hood at that point. Old Jason Todd. You just... Ritually had to find, hide and take out his men, hide, and then swoop in and knock him out. Disappointment. Huge disappointment. <sighs> Next part I'm going to talk about is the actual villains in the game. Is the actual uh, other villain, which is Poison Ivy. I thought she did great in the game. Martin, uh, and this is a different role than I remember her to be. Since she's playing the hero role this time, and I call it a little bit of redemption role, since she's tried to kill you 
in in Arkham Asylum. Huge redemption. Since uh, you have to use uh, use your plants to stop the cloud burst. And I thought that was a great moment in the game. Great, great moment in the game. Eventually, uh, during the course of the game, uh, you will meet Azrael, who is the guy you meet in Arkham uh, Arkham City, who foreshadowed this game when he mentioned the city will be burned in fire and then Batman won't be there, but a successor is needed. I think he already had a successor in the comics, and his name was Dick Grayson. And he, if you don't know, Dick Grayson actually took up the medal of Batman after Bruce Wayne retired uh, from crime finding, and he's a perfect candidate for it. Not, uh, not full stop, he's a perfect candidate. What else is to talk about the game that I have already, have already mentioned? Yeah, the actual 100% completion ending and the uh, scene is building up to it. I thought the ending was quite questionable because I don't understand. Uh, because they did the exact same thing in Dark Knight Rises. Which I don't. If you don't want to know what I mean, Dark Knight Rises kill, uh, supposedly killed up Batman and I showed him still alive. And in this game, did the exact same thing. After Bruce Wayne gets his identity revealed to the public, he thought it was uh, it's absolutely a good idea just to kill yourself so you can actually protect your friends so the criminals won't find them and draw them to you. Yeah, that, and, uh, and then an explosion came, and then, and then a kind of resembles uh, the old kind of uh, that uh, when, uh, that resembles to Bruce Wayne's uh, uh, parents' death. That Batman, uh, that mysterious Batman figure, flies out of nightmare mode and then takes him out. Supposedly killing him, but I see them as using fear against them. But I do not know who this Batman is. But it's clearly probably Bruce, uh, Bruce Wayne, since during the course of the end of the game, you, uh, Bruce Wayne gets ejected by the fear toxin and then becomes immune to it. Yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, um, uh, well, well, I got interrupted and uh, saw Terminator Genesis by my with my parents. I'll tell you my opinion later, but. Let's get it concentrate back to Batman Arc 9 review. Well, there are indeed uh, references to the Man of Steel himself, so that's something to look for. Look forward. <coughs> look for. Look, and that's what you should be looking for in the game for those references, including all the. Because uh, I mostly, if it mentions anything that's coming up next, in, a, in like, uh, for example, like Israel and Arc Knight says. Something like a burn, and you say he will burn in one day, and the next day Batman won't be there, which just foreshadows the ending of Batman Arkham Knight. And yeah, um, yeah, I imagine Superman's in the next game to do, and hopefully, I finally can wear the T-shirt for for an actual review of it. But that's none yet. So, I, and so, yeah. And I haven't really even talked about the ending yet. I'm going to end the review pretty soon since I lost what I wanted to talk about. But I should go straight to when, Karen, uh, when Batman uh, talk about that moment. Well, Batman, uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, Batman uh, got his mask taken off by Jim Gordon due to... Uh, Scarecrow threatening him to do it because uh, otherwise uh, Scarecrow is going to shoot him, uh, shoot Robin, and he does anyway, and goes through all that fear sequence and clean the epic line. Yeah, fun times. Yeah, and, and do, yeah, and during the end, during the course of the ending, you may notice that. Everyone is asking uh, him for questions like why he's been on the bat suit for so long, and he made the right decision by activating pro in the nightfall uh, protocol, uh, nightfall protocol, which is uh, to blow up everything, including his will. Yeah, that means 
there won't be any more and when we address this league uh, uh, game takes place uh, takes place uh, after the events of the Arkham Knight which they can't do because of the events of the, this game as it can't collect it due to his ending but the uh, only way to make a Justice League game with Batman in it is to actually uh, set it uh, before the Arkham games except in past origins because I imagine there's a lot of years in between so they can fit you know but anyway guys I'm gonna end the review here and this game is completely awesome when you play it. You, you'll have fun and you will have fun uh, trying to get the trophies or achievements depending which console you're playing Sa uh, sadly the PC uh, can't join us right now but in the future I imagine they they're gonna get it eventually fixed due to its huge, huge problems with it but the game I will give for the spoiling is uh, hmm why not just uh, talk about one more bit about the game just do it jeez Shia wants it he just needs to wait it just do it but I do love to say the rating now but I need to speak about one more moment in the game no! What are you waiting for? Do it! Okay, Shia. Okay, have a good way, man. The, my rating for Batman Arkham Knight, spoiler, uh, with spoilers, is an 8.5 out of 10. <laughs> I'm one minus point from the spoiler-free version because of those reasons I mentioned in the spoiler-filled version. And you managed to get to this point of the review, I graduate you because, because, uh, man, this game is something really worth talking about. Him. But tell me your thoughts down below, telling me what you think about the game if you want to do it, and doing the unusual shit as I usually do when a YouTuber uh, begs for likes or comments or subscribing. Doing the unusual shit, and you know the tradition. I don't need to say them. It's too easy. So, like I said before, see you guys in the next in the next video, and I will see you guys soon. Bye bye.